This is Connor. He landed on his head after falling from a zip line in his friend's backyard. Nearly two million traumatic brain injuries occur every year, resulting in 50,000 deaths and $76.5 billion in medical costs, with children like Connor comprising the highest rates of TBI. While the brain's response to injury is varied, a TBI can make even seemingly simple tasks very difficult, resulting in long-lasting impacts. But scientists are finding new discoveries that will hopefully help that in the future. I'm Kelsey Culler, and this is research. To learn more about TBI, I met with Dr. Lorraine Siebold, a graduate student researcher at Loma Linda University Health, who's searching to find a solution. I love the brain. I think it's absolutely incredible. And we often take for granted what's happening in our brains. And so when you have that taken away from you through an injury, what normally is very easy for you, like speaking or moving your hands or remembering what you had for breakfast, is now really difficult. How long do those effects last? It depends. And it depends on where you got injured and how severe that injury is. But there's research indicating that this inflammatory response can last for decades and can have long-term influences on your memory and cognitive functioning. So where do you even start with this research? Uh, so the first thing is to identify a drug or some type of intervention that could reduce inflammation. And we chose cosyntropin. Tell me a little bit about how you chose that specific drug. It's been used for other diseases and disorders, and it's been shown to reduce inflammation. But um, it hasn't been investigated for brain injury. So we wanted to see if that drug could be used to reduce the inflammatory response following traumatic brain injury. Tell me a little bit about your study. We took mice who had experienced a traumatic brain injury and we treated them with cosyntropin. We then evaluated their memory through a maze and then we also evaluated their inflammatory response by looking at how many microglia were around the injured area. So what did you find? One of the things that we found was that cosyntropin helped to improve memory, which was very exciting, and it also reduced the inflammatory response. So we saw less microglia, and the microglia that we did see looked more like the good microglia, and that's the ones that are going to help the healing process. That's incredible. So what are the next steps for your research? What are the possibilities for humans? I'm really hopeful and I'm very excited and we have some very promising data, um, but there's a lot of questions that we still haven't answered. So we know the drug is improving memory in the mice. We know that there is a reduction in the inflammatory response, but we don't know why. Uh, so we get to explore that. <laughs> and then we don't know if this will transition and be helpful in humans. The great thing about research is that you get to go into the unknown and you get to discover answers that um, no one's asked or no one's found out, and that, that's really exciting. Yeah, but then you have to slide it down. Maybe Connor maybe turned out to be okay, and he's back to being a kid just as he should be. But for many children and adults suffering from traumatic brain injury, they aren't as fortunate. Hopefully with Dr. Siebel's research and further study, we'll find new treatments to treat traumatic brain injury to give those suffering a brighter future. And that's what research is all about. <laughs>